passato. Decidi dove andare. Apri quella porta. Accendi il tuo motore. Allaccia la cintura. Stringiti al volante. E vieni via con me. Spiagge grandi come il nostro cuore. Tu sei la stella. Mare aperto come i nostri abbracci. Quando ti perdi. Terre sicure come il nostro amore. La Romagna è il sorriso degli italiani. Accendi il tuo motore, allaccia la cintura, stringiti al volante e vieni via con me. Romagna mia! Spiagge grandi come il nostro cuore. Tu sei la stella. Mare aperto come i nostri abbracci. Quando ti perdi. Terre sicure come il nostro amore. La Romagna e il sorriso degli italiani. Buongiorno, benvenuti a tutti. Good morning and welcome to this third day of the meeting. Divide or wonder, we remain deaf to the sublime. This is this year's title. And today we continue what we have started on the first day. And we have a special section devoted to sustainability and subsidiarity. And we talk about this today with some guests that decided to come here personally and uh, I'm going to introduce them to you in a second. So I would like to 
greet all the people who are here with us uh, and to the people that are following us uh, from remote from Italy and abroad. So we're going to talk about mobility and tourism, so sectors that are in full change and we're going to do so with uh, some uh, highly high flying guests. So we have uh, Paola De Micheli, the Minister for Infrastructure and Transport. Thank you very much, Minister, for coming. And uh, I would like to thank Gianfranco Battisti, Managing Director and General Director of Ferrovie dello Stato. Welcome and thank you for being here. Andrea Corsini, Councillor for Mobility, Transport, Infrastructure, Tourism and Commerce for Emilia Romagna Region. So we are going to deal with all the main aspects that are part of your mandate. And then uh, Councillor Sergio Mediovini. Council for Tourism of Friuli Venezia Giulia region, who already came here in the past. And then we have uh, Giorgio Palmucci, the president of ENIT, who is connected from remote. Good morning, Mr. Palmucci. So let's go straight to the heart of our topic because we really want uh, to delve into this theme. So we're going to start with the minister. Certainly the title that we chose for today's uh, session is a title that actually is always up to date, but after the COVID emergency becomes even more interesting, especially in the light of what happened over the last few months. And mobility and tourism certainly are two sides of the same coin, especially in a country like ours, because our country uh, is a very strategic country for tourism. It's a great tourist destination, and uh, also it's very structured in terms of mobility. So we're going to see together the perspectives for the future, considering what uh, emerged uh, over the past two days because to summarize uh, we have tried so far to understand uh, the next steps to take for the future and the direction to be taken thank you very much again minister thank you and thanks to the meeting for this prestigious invitation I'm very very happy to be here I've attended the meeting in the past in its, let's say, normal setting that we hope to see again very soon in the future. So I'm very happy to be here. I think that uh, the government and uh, society in general and tourist and mobility operators in general, we have to face uh, some key topics in the near future. First of all, rules for mobility because Mobility rules will need some changes because mobility as we knew it won't come back so quickly. And this first issue is not easy because, for instance, as far as flying sort of is concerned and planes uh, are concerned, uh, we needed to set fixed rules and to have uh, commonly shared rules when it comes to uh, air transport. So we need new rules guaranteeing the health safety of all stakeholders and passengers and operators and uh, certainly tourists uh, will somehow be affected by some impact because of course uh, we won't have uh, enough, probably, appropriate uh, means of transport uh, to move around uh, all the people and the tourists that want to move around. So it's important to cooperate with the uh, regional uh, transport operators, local transport operators, uh, and uh, main stakeholders uh, in general to take up this challenge. And then there is a big challenge for the whole country because certainly we need to face a new attitude by public opinion when it comes to mobility infrastructure. There's a greater and better and closer attitude towards uh, public mobility. 
and even building sites are seen today as opportunities. Italia Veloce, Speedy Italy is a new plan that we have devised. It's based on railway mobility and uh, it's a major solution in response to the new requirements of sustainable mobility. It's also socially uh, sustainable because in spite of the high infrastructure setting up costs, then people will have lower mobility costs in the long run. Italia Veloce, this speedy Italy plan, sees a new railway infrastructure and then uh, we have focused a lot on ports because ports are very important and strategic not only when it comes to passengers but also on goods because Italy is a key Mediterranean country so we can certainly tap into the billions of value of goods that still transit through the Mediterranean. When it comes to the railway sector, we have allocated a 200 billion euros plan over 15 years that we're going to finance with the recovery fund and 80% of Italians will be able to be at less than one hour distance from a major railway infrastructure hub. That will mean for everybody to have easy access within a very short reach to move around very quickly and swiftly. So that will certainly bring about growth and economic prosperity in those areas because we have seen that high-speed trains have brought about prosperity. I'm thinking about, for instance, the high-speed trains between Reggio Calabria and Salerno and also the choice we made to try to remove from the coast to the Adriatic line and uh, the high-speed trains have proved to be very effective. And, uh, for instance, it could be interesting to create it in regions where there is a lot of tourism. And high-speed infrastructure building sites have been started in Milan, in Venice. I was in Verona the other day to submit the paperwork for the Verona-Vicenza stretch, because both in the north and in the south, these kinds of infrastructure mean competition competitiveness for companies, competitiveness for uh, people, for professionals, for professional movers of goods, transporters and freight forwarders. When it comes to tourism-oriented mobility, I cannot hide the fact that I'm always very, very surprised by the level of underestimation by public opinion of ports and very little debate is made uh, on the ports, uh, uh, even on the press and on TV, because Italy has two-thirds of its borders overlooking the sea. And uh, we have Trieste, a big port here, we have Ravenna, not far from here. We are investing 250 million euros. So ports are key for us as a country for good transport before COVID. 450 billion euros of goods were transported into the Mediterranean and we could somehow tap into 12% of that. So that means a lot of money of business and transport. And ports are also very important for tourists, cruise liners for instance, but also shorter haul uh, journeys, much shorter in terms of distances and time with respect to along the cruises and we have seen that that kind of investments have had positive repercussions on the level and quality of reachability of places but i'm still talking about pre-covid times so we saw very important and positive spillover effects of such a sort of boosting of the ports and even the decision of uh, reconstructing our national airline company that is going to be gradually oriented towards the market. So having the new Alitalia that is uh, 
uh, going to be a new tool aimed at uh, somehow supporting Italy as a key destination. So we really want to make the most of that to channel tourism in our country. So if you consider 2019 data, we have seen that internationally uh, Alitalia could allow Italy to somehow get back a number of tourists that theoretically would be much, much higher than the number of tourists that we have had so far. Well, the world is changing, but we want to be stuck. We will adapt to that. We will adopt the necessary different rules. And certainly, we want to make sure that people who want to come and visit our country will be able to move around better and uh, in a quicker way and with the maximum level of safety. This is what lies behind, be, behind this uh, Italia Veloce plan, uh, 200 billion euros investment level, also thanks to the European Recovery Fund. Well, you said many interesting things and uh, I've already thought about some questions to ask you later on during the second round of questions and you certainly gave us much food for thought. Something that uh, struck me always when we talk about uh, these topics and especially I'm referring to issues that uh, strike me as non-professional is the fact that there is a deep connection between infrastructure, transport, mobility, tourism, health and uh, minister. You mentioned a specific plan, some programming, some safety rules and so there is a local level that collaborates strongly and deeply with the national level. So I'm here today to talk about this and uh, we have the councillor for this sector of who live in Italy, Giulia, and so uh, my question is the following. If we consider what happened, well, this is certain a systemic factor because, of course, what we are talking about is part of a large framework. I mean, infrastructure is strictly related to transport and so on and so forth. But at the same time, it's very hard to understand how institutions can then work and talk to local entities. So, Councillor Bini, the word goes to you. Thank you very much again for the invitation. It's always a great pleasure for me to come to Rimini and join and visit the meeting, even though this year is a special edition, but always very well organized. Certainly, there's no doubt about the fact that this year is a different year the country and even for our region, this is clear to all. And you said it very well. There is a, a minimum common denominator, mobility, how people move around, the speed of uh, movement and how is it possible to tap into tourist flows. And uh, I'm uh, talking about this from the point of view of a region that has a big potential. We have a very important port that grew a lot over the last few years. We had uh, a short uh, sort of period of, of uh, standby because of the COVID. But I must say that all in all, this season is uh, going pretty well. And uh, let's consider that we have uh, 9,200,000 tourists per year. 57% of them are foreigners, so they come from Austria and Germany. And well, this year everybody was scared. There were so many cancellations and uh, tourist operators and economic operators very much worried. Well, the season is not over yet. Some categories are still suffering and I'm referring specifically to hotels, but other sectors instead, in spite of the level of sacrifice, are resisting pretty well. We are a small region, but well, we have uh, hills, we have mountains, we have seaside within a very uh, short reach, very few kilometers, and this is an advantage. And people like this, people love this. So people this year wanted rules, wanted safety, 
and uh, easy access. We have a very very small airport that was shut down until mid-June if my memory serves me right and uh, we have uh, railway lines uh, and uh, so I shyly suggested to invest a bit in here maybe it's not so I mean uh, cost effective but high speed trains are very important and uh, we have uh, a railway hub that is just next to the airport. It would be beautiful to connect. Oh, it, Trieste Venice is already part of our Italia Veloce plan. It has already been financed. Wow, we are completing a negotiation live here on stage. Oh, that's great news because that would be a great advantage for Fiori Venezia Giulia. And well, we are a connecting region connecting north and south uh, and east and west so we are at the crossroad we are easy to be reached and many decided to come to us with their own car it's safe it's quick and uh, you can move around in case of emergency in case of need as a country we need to invest a lot and I heard very very impressive reach figures and certainly we need all that money to modernize our infrastructure and also the infrastructure that is used for tourist purposes and um, while well, we all hope to overcome this situation very very soon however we have learned uh, to manage the tourist offer differently we have increased and boosted uh, slow tourism. Well, I want to share some data with you. Well, beaches are suffering, but uh, mountain destinations uh, are sort of really having very good results. Uh, there is uh, a sold out situation in many, many places. So decision makers and lawmakers should learn to propose and offer something new and also cycling ways we're investing a lot on that because there's a growing demand of cycling ways so again everything has pros and cons advantages and disadvantages but our hope is to have resources from the government for our region so the world is changing and we're trying to adapt thank you thank you councillor bini Council for Tourism of Fili Venezia Giulia and now let's move and we have uh, Gigola Motugano, Councillor for Production Activities for Sicily and we have a video contribution. We asked him the same question. So as to Sicily, the answer is complex because uh, we are geographically a bit uh, aside and uh, also in terms of infrastructure I must say that uh, the situation is not easy and uh, we still talk about uh, uh, projects that uh, are then changed every five or ten years. Councillor Falcone and the president of the region decided to uh, do something different uh, and uh, with ANAS and Ferrovia dello Stato because if we keep considering Sicily, if a, a, play, a place where to cover with the train a very short distance, it takes hours, well, we're not competitive. And uh, well, we are such a beautiful place uh, and the world is starting to get to know us. Uh, so uh, we would really like uh, a people to see Sicily differently. That's why we are investing a lot in terms of uh, airport network and I think that in a few years time Sicily will become a buzzword not just for these uh, changes that we're carrying out but also because in terms of connections we will provide uh, new services and also provide the possibility to come here 
and really fully enjoy your holiday. So we're really, really, really trying to invest a lot in tourism. Well, great. Uh, this contribution links up with uh, Gianfranco Battisti, another guest, uh, managing director and uh, general director of Ferrovie dello Stato, the national railway company. And so you deal with transport, infrastructure, so you certainly know far too well the things you're talking about. And it comes also from a very intense period. So in the light of what you heard, which are the uh, specific areas we could consider for future development? Well, first of all, when it comes to mobility and tourism, they have been both heavily hit by the crisis. So we are two key players at this emergency. This is not clearly just a health emergency. But also, this crisis is also a great opportunity because it can work as an accelerator to bring about those changes that so far have not occurred. So this crisis is also an accelerator that somehow makes some diseases come up to the first surface much, much quicker. And previous speakers already said it, because tourism and transport are some sort of sick patients. Well, let's take tourism. Well, in terms of offer, the quality is still too low. And then there is the seasonality of uh, the demand uh, and also the flows uh, that somehow also are strongly influenced by other third factors. So you can have over tourism on some specific destinations that are those that may have uh, an artistic heritage that is very, very developed. And then digitalization. Italy is a very green country and it's also a country that is trying to get digitalized. But much remains to be done, especially when training and uh, long life learning is concerned because training to us is very, very important to properly face this crisis also in an innovative way. So I think that it is important to always consider the person at the very center of this. When it comes to transport, so what are the major topics? First of all, the intermodal, 74% of mobility, it's still made with cars. So we have tried to do something to make this mix shift. But what is happening now, while people are going back to private car use because it's perceived as safer, then we have uh, the demand curve and the variability of the curve for the demand of uh, commuting services and uh, mobility to and from uh, key urban transport hubs. So we need uh, very soon to talk to the minister to find solutions together because institutions need to talk to each other to deeply change, for instance, the timetable of public transport according to the needs of the schooling world and the labor world. You can't have everything concentrated between 7 and 9 in the morning. It's not sustainable any longer. We need really to fix that. How? Well, very easily. Italia Veloce, investment plan. But when it comes to infrastructure, we need to consider that, uh, well, the resources are there, but the digitalization is another part of the story because, of course, we need to modernize and upgrade the infrastructure, but there is also uh, another equal sector that is the digitalization. We have invested four billion that were self-financed uh, uh, to improve uh, the uh, relation to final customers. And in particular, we want to provide a more competitive vision and uh, fill a technological gap that we have accumulated over the years. So this links up perfectly with the Green New Deal. So all the investments that are made on physical infrastructure 
go hand in hand with sustainability and it's also important to have a long-term vision that is daring and then digitization is also very important so we are investing a lot in infrastructure and all that will change the logistics setting of the country high-speed trains have played a very important role for tourism 8 million tourists transported with high-speed trains in 10 years high-speed trains will bring 11 billion euros of added value when it comes to tourism and this is not self-evident this shows to what extent infrastructure can have a heavy impact on the economic situation of the country so we're going to strongly invest in the physical part of the structure and then in technology and then you have transport transport with new means of transport and again the green new deal is going to support us we have invested 12 billion for 12 new uh, means of transport so that the fleet will be renewed not only for trains but also for uh, buses because it's very important to have uh, import, important modern uh, means so we have invested 40,000 new means of transport 12 billion euros so our key asset is to do something for the future of the country again we have infrastructure investments digital investments so certainly we can do something meaningful i say so because and draghi mentioned being brave and daring and talked about competency and skills so adopting such a long-term vision is uh, something daring and today's millennials will be the users or even more so the managers of the infrastructure that we are imagining today. For instance, for high-speed trains, as Minister said, for some key connecting lines of the country, we are already quite ahead. They're going to connect us with all Europe. Today, the domestic market is the European market. That's why the uh, Naples, uh, Naples but, sorry, body is going to be key. 20,000 new recruitments. So again, it is possible then to connect uh, Bari with uh, the Scandinavian corridor that reaches up to Russia. So again, the logistic asset of the country needs to be changed. We want to be at the center, at the forefront, and we can because certainly long haul is there and we uh, really think that it's very promising. Okay, so I'm going to continue my questions and then uh, I will come back to you later on. We have another video by Sticky Damiani, the president of ACI, and we asked him the same questions. So, as of today, and in the light of what happened, uh, over the last few months we've been recording uh, on the part of the Italian people a great preponderance of uh, the use of uh, um, cars vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, public transport. Of course, all this uh, does not take into account sustainability-related uh, issues. Uh, so all the debate on local public transport which should be um, renewed. We know that many vehicles are uh, too old, so the fleet needs to be modernized. But today, uh, the Italian people uh, often have to uh, decide uh, which uh, car to buy in order to be used to tackle this uh, new situation we have to be um, faced with. So this is a fundamental aspect. Uh, We've had a, a conference in which we evaluated uh, uh, very carefully uh, the uh, possible evolution of mobility for the next 10 years, uh, um, dealing with uh, focusing on uh, thermal engines, uh, um, electric engines, etc., in order to provide uh, proper, correct information to the citizens. Uh, we will try to work uh, 
so that we have a 10-year plan by the end of the year. The important aspect is that citizens are informed on uh, what, this, what the Italian state believes uh, sustainable from an economic and environmental point of view. We need to find a harmonized uh, balance system which can be projected over the next 10-year period, and we must know exactly which steps we can take from an economic point of view, um, especially considering the uh, possible trends and the possible outcomes of this pandemic, so that citizens can have a sufficient view so as they are able to uh, plan future purchases when it comes to cars. Uh, just a few um, just a few uh, months ago, uh, you could not um, enter uh, some cities, uh, even if you had a very modern uh, car. Uh, when it comes to um, uh, electric mobility, well, we need to focus on this aspect. Um, although the real uh, pollution of a car uh, during its life cycle has not been uh, properly investigated. This is why, in this meeting that we had last year, uh, we uh, we draw the attention on the real aspects related to pollution, and we saw that um, in the case of uh, last generation uh, diesel engine, uh, the difference vis-à-vis -vis, uh, other um, sources. Uh, uh, of, um, of fuel uh, is minimal. We uh, we do have the necessary uh, money to carry out uh, many improvements. Uh, well, as for the hydro hydrogen, it's fantastic. Uh, it's it's perfect to us because it frees us from being dependent uh, from the uh, raw materials. We are dependent from raw materials, and we know that the raw materials in this case uh, are concentrated in uh, just a few countries which have been uh, having the monopoly uh, over the of the mines so we must uh, try and bring forward all the possible um, hypotheses in a structured way without uh, causing disasters on the market. So here too we have several um, hints, we have some food for thought and these uh, may be um, further developed by the Minister, the vision, planning, the topic of transition, sustainability, also emerging from this contribution, many aspects which have to do with the topic we're dealing with. I would like to ask um, local, local, local Councillor Consini to uh, provide his contribution considering that he is the local councillor for mobility, transports and infrastructure, tourism and business of the Emilia-Romagna region, which is a hub, a very important logistic hub in the Italian territory uh, because it is located uh, between the northern and the southern part of Italy. So you certainly have to deal with many uh, of the aspects we're talking about. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, we um, we are located transversely, so to say. So you, if you want to move from north to south or vice versa, you need to um, cross the Emilia-Romagna region. Uh, we managed to intercept many tourists. Uh, before the COVID, um, we uh, recorded 60 million tourists. So we need to be optimistic. We need to be. We need to trust the future. Um, and this is not to be taken for granted. We are dealing with these uh, strategic topics for the development of the country in a moment in which in the Emilia-Romagna region, but not only in the Emilia-Romagna region, but also in other regions, the hotels are um, fully booked. Uh, this is not to be taken for granted because just a few months ago we were all afraid of a, a debacle uh, when it comes to the tourist sector. Uh, we were afraid uh, of the fact that the um, tourist season and the Emilia-Romagna region uh, has a vocation when it comes to tourism. Uh, we were afraid of losing um, a great deal of money uh, because of the reduction in the, in the tourist numbers. So uh, talking about um, attractiveness for the tourists um, is, um, uh, is important and we do have some um, some positive uh, some positive trends and some some positive data. 
I would like to divide my reasoning in two, in two, in two parts. One of our challenges during the restart phase was that, which was related with mobility. There were some criticisms on the part of some trade unions um, vis-à-vis uh, some um, crowded regional trains, but I would like to provide you with a datum, with a figure. In order to guarantee safety mobility in this emergency phase, not only for tourists uh, and not only during the weekends, uh, uh, for all the people who um, um, travel to the Adriatic coast, we guarantee 31 trains, uh, um, extra trains uh, per week. Thanks to the efforts made by our company, which in 2019 uh, won the um, competition for rail transport with the particip core participation of Trenitalia, and then we have a um, TIPER, the regional uh, public transport company, we managed to guarantee extra trains during the emergency phase. So this is a first topic, managing the flows of uh, travelers. Uh, we've made great efforts uh, uh, guaranteeing the safety. Of course, there may have been some crowded trains, but I would like to thank our um, workers, our companies, because they really did um, their utmost. We must um, remember what happened, because in the next few years, the competitiveness of our economic systems, including the tourism, sector will be re uh, related to the possibility to be reached um, for a destination, as the minister said earlier. With um, an extra attention vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the past, this health-related crisis will certainly have effects on the way in which uh, vacations are made and the way uh, in which um, um, a traveller reaches the destination for uh, for the holidays. We need to act in this respect. We need to speed up investments. Uh, we finally have a strategic uh, view with the Italia Veloce plan on the part of the government. Hopefully, it will be uh, Italia Veloce, so fast Italy, because it will be fa implemented uh, rapidly. Not only because it will enable Italy to Italian citizens to travel um, more rapidly. Um, I think there, we're going to have a degree which will simplify procedures. We need to um, increase the level of uh, quality when it comes to mobility. Um, giving you the example of the Emilia-Romagna region, in 2019, as Mr. Battisti and the Minister know very well, uh, we um, uh, launched a bid, a call for proposals, and we have 750 million investments, partly co-financed by the government, to use the rail transport for 86 new trains. 80% of these trains are already working. They are electrical trains. They increase the comfort level considerably when it comes to users, and they will um, reduce uh, once they all uh, they are all operational, they will reduce the average age of the trains um, circulating on the regional network to um, just more than one year from 20 years of the past. So we're going to have the youngest, uh, the the most modern uh, train fleet in Europe. So we are moving towards the trends, um, increasing, improving the qualitative levels of transport. We need to insist on this aspect. Uh, the electrification of the regional uh, railway lines. So we need to ensure a uh, mobility which is not only sustainable but also able to provide um, responses in terms of connection, uh, comfort and uh, safety. Um, Mr. Battisti talked about digitalization. It is a very important topic and it will be uh, it will mark the difference between uh, tourist destinations. So these are important topics. So from our point of view, this is the way to go in order for Italy to become um, not only a faster country, but also a more competitive country. Then we have another challenge, that the road infrastructure. Over the last years, we've been uh, experiencing a, an infrastructure gap vis-a-vis -vis other European countries. Italia Veloce, the plan, uh, directly uh, tackles this problem. Um, creating a list of priorities for the various interventions, 
As a region, we have 4 billion um, euros worth of public works. And the minister know, uh, knows very well. They are strategic because we need to uh, raise the uh, standards of our uh, uh, of our uh, mobility infrastructure. Uh, when you when we talk about the um, the, the road um, uh, crossing Bologna, uh, some people uh, tend to say that it, it has nothing to do with the general mobility of the country. But we will unblock uh, thanks to the ring road. Uh, we will uh, unblock the uh, the traffic jams in uh, around Bologna. Uh, a German traveler, um, for a German traveler, it takes more to reach uh, the Adriatic coast from uh, from the Emilia-Romagna region rather than uh, leaving from Germany. So we are now focusing on the domestic market, but we need to continue investing on uh, foreign markets as well as soon as this uh, situation gets normal again. As for the Cisparana road, that's another strategic infrastructure that will connect us with the uh, northwestern um, parts of Europe. It will facilitate mobility uh, and it will um, increase the, um, the ability to reach the destinations of the Adriatic coast. These are the challenges ahead of us. And so the crisis is putting us in front of uh, human uh, tragedies linked to all the people who died because of the COVID pandemic. We, will also, we are also experiencing economic difficulties, but we also have opportunities. The recovery fund, when it comes to infrastructure and sustainable mobility, can really be uh, the driver uh, enabling us to uh, take the quality leap, which is um, so uh, very much needed in Italy. Thank you very much. We will go back to this topic. We have the president of um, Enit, Mr. Palmucci. I now leave the floor to him for his um, remarks uh, on the part of the uh, national uh, tourism uh, entity. We would like to know your opinion um, concerning the situation, not only the current situation, but what um, local councillor Corsini has just uh, stated. So which are the opportunities to be taken? And how should we look at the future? Thank you very much. Thanks for having me here. This year I'm not there personally, but I will uh, certainly come back to Rimini in the future. I totally share what has been said up to now. We've been witnessing and we're still witnessing a, a tragic moment not only as as far as tourism is concerned, but also as far as uh, the health sector and the rest of the world are concerned. But this leads us to a reason on a speeding up of the changes and the pillars of the uh, strategic plan for tourism. So what should we do in order to have a sustainable, accessible and innovative tourism? I've listened to uh, what the previous speaker said, and I've listened to what can be done in order to facilitate access to Italy and the access to Italian destinations on the part of Italian uh, travelers. This is of fundamental importance if we uh, want uh, tourism to in be increased in Italy, not only referring to the classical, to the typical uh, tourist destinations which experienced the over-tourism phenomena, but also concerning slow tourism and enabling uh, Italians and foreigners to know um, um, all Italy's destinations better, not only continuing to promote Italy abroad, um, going beyond the difficulties of the present situation. At present, we are focusing most of all on the European countries, because it is almost impossible at present uh, coming to Italy from the US or from Eastern, uh, Eastern Asia, East uh, Asia. But what may, everything which may facilitate access to Italy or uh, may enable to discover Italy as, uh, as, as a whole, because indeed we have a, a wide range of um, kinds of tourism. We have a wide range of destinations and we have a very wide tourist offer in Italy. 
as I had the chance to say in the last few days, vis-à-vis uh, -vis other um, tragic events uh, which affected tourism over the last few decades, wars, uh, uh, terrorist attacks, uh, the aviary flu, uh, the wars uh, or the tsunami, the COVID-19 pandemic, at least did not affect the hardware, namely uh, our cultural, natural, um, artistic heritage. So Italy, in this sense, should be able to uh, to have everybody forget the negative uh, image uh, that was spread uh, at the beginning of the pandemic uh, when Italy was actually the first one of the first countries taking uh, the necessary measures in order to minimize the effects of the pandemic. So I think that uh, what we've uh, listened to today goes towards the proper direction and uh, we've started to uh, collect data since the beginning of the um, uh, quarantine um, through our 25 offices all over the world and the data referring to the ports uh, activities and we can say that there are some positive signals in this uh, during this month of august especially when it comes to mountain uh, destinations and sea resorts uh, the arts cities are suffering a bit because they are very much, um, but they are the main destination, the major destination for, for of foreign tourists. We uh, are currently uh, lacking tourists coming from the U.S. and from uh, from China, and this uh, means that our cities uh, need to face very complex situations. However, this must be an opportunity to be taken in order to improve our tourist offer. And I'm referring to um, accommodation, to hotels, and to all the services which are provided to tourists. Thank you very much. Uh, we uh, have just a few minutes left. If my guests uh, allow me, I would uh, uh, I would like to have an, a non-conventional kind of remark. The title of this uh, of this year's meeting is a provocation in some sense. In some sense, the word of wonder will remain deaf to the sublime. This is the title of this year's meeting. During the COVID period, we wondered whether we could maintain this title or not. It might have seemed um, unsuitable or unfit to talk about wonder. We decided to maintain to keep the title. In the end. Because as we heard in many uh, sessions uh, over these last few days, we believe that uh, facing the challenges means having a starting point or having an indication on how to tackle these topics in which we do need wonder, in which it is possible to talk about wonder even in this <coughs> moment, or we may talk about trust, about uh, vision. So I would like to know from you, where should we start from? Is it possible in such a, a, a complex period to uh, to experience wonder or not? So I will uh, um, I will have the second uh, turn um, the other way around. So I will start from uh, President Palmucci. You have the floor. Well, I think that you were right to keep the title. I believe that in such difficult moments. I am positively impressed by all the efforts which have been made by all the operators in the tourist sector to look forward to the future, to focus on the possibility for a recovery, to see foreign tourists coming back to, to Italy. I am very much impressed by the uh, outstanding committee by the outstanding commitment of all the operators and all those working in the tourist sector, and I would also like the, to thank the government for the uh, recent interventions, for the recent actions. Uh, they are fa the tourist sector is facing an unprecedented crisis, and I am also positively impressed by the fact that um, having a look at the social media uh, or um, browsing the web, we are aware of the fact that Italy remains the number one destination. Um, for uh, for the whole world. So Italy continues to be the most desired country by any traveler or by any tourist 
whatever the country he or she may come from. So this leaves me with a, uh, with a hope for the future. Now the floor to local councillor Corsini. Uh, well, I will start from this remark. Italy is a great country. And during this crisis, of course, we may have made some mistakes um, at institutional level uh, overall. However, we've demonstrated, we showed that we were able to manage this health crisis in a very responsible way. Uh, other countries did not do the same. And this is, of course, a great sign, not only for our fellow nationals, but also a message which we can convey um, outside Italy's borders. Uh, Italy has thousands of defects, but when we need to react to crises, and to tragedies such uh, such as the uh, recent pandemic, um, Italy is able to react with a dedication, with sense of responsibilities, with, with the sense for sacrifice. I believe this is the most important teaching we can uh, we can uh, have from this crisis, and maybe we will be able to um, to make this um, big uh, story grow in the in the near future. And I'll leave the floor to Mr. Battisti. It is a, a great opportunity for discontinuity, an opportunity to revise our way to work, a, an opportunity to work in a systemic way. Think about the um, approach uh, to the health uh, crisis at the European level. It was a, sh it was a shame, it was outrageous. Uh, each one needs to play their part, and we need to go back to basics, the, um, the man at the core of all logics, whether company logics or political logics. As for company, as for companies, and this is one of the aims we have, we should not only focus on maximizing profits, we should also generate shared values, especially in those areas where this is needed the most. These are the elements we should take so that the crisis becomes an opportunity. Uh, now the floor to uh, local councillor Bini. Well, Italy in this very difficult moment uh, really impressed us. We were astonished by the reaction of our country. The crisis was managed um, in an excellent way, maybe in one of the best ways possible at world level. Uh, as for the social aspects, uh, uh, Italians uh, did their utmost. Uh, when it comes to tourism, I'm talking about Trieste, Lignano, Salvador, Grado, some entrepreneurs really decided to take risks. Even though they knew they were losing money, they decided to, uh, to keep their um, businesses open. Now the time has come to... Uh, we, we need to... Uh, the time has come to astonish the others, to astonish the new generations the generations which will manage our uh, our country in the future. This is a time and we have a, a great opportunity, not just because we're going to receive money from the recovery fund. I'm, I'm talking about change. I think that we need to create a system. There shouldn't be any difference between political parties or, poli or between North and South of Italy. Italy needs to work uh, we Italians need to work all together in order to give our future generations a future. And now I leave the floor to the minister. I've experienced uh, the wonder. Well, I was a first minister who decided to shut down all transport, all the transport systems. It was the first time in Italy's history. I decided to shut down all the transport uh, means so that people uh, did not... Um, uh, get infected with the disease. Um, I still have uh, uh, memories. Uh, my town was one of the most, uh, one of the worst uh, hit by the COVID. So the first wonder is that of the emergency. Um, all of us uh, felt astonished. The wonder of the emergency, which for my ministry and for the uh, transports was a wonder vis-a-vis uh, -vis those who continue to work all the operators who continued to work so that we could uh, find uh, drugs in the, in the chemists, uh, we could continue to buy foodstuffs, 
the wonder of today and the wonder for the future generations, which must be fueled by competence, skills, courage, humbleness, which were the three key words of the opening um, ceremony of this meeting. The wonder of today uh, for tomorrow is that of the vision project, which shouldn't possibly be um, unquestionable. We've made a proposal to the country, to the parliament, that of the Italia Veloce plan, which vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the slow uh, tourism, which is today's market, provides a response for modernization of, of the country. Because uh, we have uh, a noun and an adjective. We have, we have Italia, Italy, and Veloce, fast. So we should try and feel and mm, feel astonished uh, sharing a plan, improving a plan if necessary, a plan which, according to our intentions, should uh, change radically in the next six to seven years both the life and the mobility of people and therefore the quality of the life giving people more opportunities, for instance, uh, choosing to live in the hinterland because the uh, mobility will, uh, will be guaranteed. Uh, I was a commissioner during the earthquake period, and we would like to guarantee people the possibility to choose to remain uh, and live in the southern Italian regions because they can benefit from an increased, from a, an improved mobility when it comes to tourism, the possibility to develop the tourist industry, which in our region, which in Emilia-Romagna region is, um, is a star because of uh, project capabilities and for the quality of our entrepreneurs to develop tourist, uh, uh, tourism in other areas where this has not happened because thanks to this uh, vision of the country, in about five, six, seven years, depending on the projects we are implementing, will be um, a reality. So trying to be capable of seeing the country in another way and to build it without being afraid of facing difficulties. We will certainly have to face difficulties. A recent degree has speeded up the opening up of, uh, um, of uh, building yards, <laughs> Um, we cannot hide that we do have problems, but we should not uh, avoid having emissions. We shouldn't avoid having high hopes. The wonder of a fact that after such a tremendous situation, Italy is still willing to react with a project and with a vision. These are the thoughts which uh, are behind these two words, Italia Veloce, and in these uh, few days, um, we will start moving from uh, projects to, um, to works uh, being started. We know that there will be a phase in which the emergency will have to coexist with the normality of projects. We will have to make, um, to make changes step by step, gradually, to respond to the changing situations to respond to the need to keep together two rights of people, health and mobility. Mobility and health, both of them are recognized by the Constitution. Uh, they are acknowledged in the Constitution. This is an unknown challenge for us. We will respond with progressive adjustments to the emergency, but while we are living and experiencing the emergency, we as a government have a view, a vision, and a project which goes well beyond emergency. Thank you very much to the Minister and thanks to all our guests. They've had a chance to witness that we do have a pathway, we do have a way to go, we do have a vision for the future. I would like to greet them all, to um, thank them all, uh, all those here in this room and, um, and President Palmucci. And hopefully we will meet again in the near, in the near future to uh, take stock of what has, what has been done. Thank you very much. chiedono la foto
decidi dove andare, apri quella porta, accendi il tuo motore, allaccia la cintura, stringiti al volante e vieni via con me. Spiagge grandi come il nostro cuore. Tu sei la stella. Mare aperto come i nostri abbracci. Quando ti perdi. Terre sicure come il nostro amore. La Romagna e il sorriso degli italiani. Accendi il tuo motore, allaccia la cintura, stringiti al volante e vieni via con me. Spiagge grandi come il nostro cuore, mare aperto come i nostri abbracci, terre sicure come il nostro amore. La Romagna e il sorriso degli italiani. 